You want chats? You want chats? Shake. Who's a good girl? Have a chat. Oh, g'day. My name's Jack, and I'm a prawn farmer. That's not something I ever thought I'd be able to introduce myself as, but you know what? Here we are. I'm a prawn farmer. Now, over the past couple of months, as I've been working at this prawn farm, I've been filming it to be able to give you guys the experience that I know that you don't want, because I'll tell you what, working on a prawn farm, it's got its ups, it's got its downs, but mostly it's got its downs. It's a pretty tough job, even though it is simultaneously the easiest job that I've ever had. And to begin this video off, we're gonna start with the worst job that you could possibly have, in my humble opinion, at the prawn farm, and that's working on the partial harvest. Let's get started, shall we? Hope you enjoy early starts, because you'll be starting at 3 a.m. every day. That's when the prawns are most active. If you're on the partials, your job involves jumping in the ponds and setting up the nets to catch them. One end of the net is attached to the bank and the other end is attached to a pole about 10 metres in. Water depth varies from knee to nipple deep, but if you're short, you'll be swimming, so you better learn breaststroke. Once you've set up the nets, it's time for a coffee. There'll be none of that fancy cafe shit here. It'll be Nest Cafe or nothing for you. Be grateful you even get anything. You're a prawn farmer for fuck's sake. I was born one morning when the sun didn't shine. I picked up my shovel and I walked to the mine. 16 tons. Once you've made your coffee, it's time to empty the water from your boots. Don't get too excited though. Company policy dictates that they stay on your feet at all times. Now it's time for you to sit around, cold and wet, for the next three hours until the nets fill up. You get paid for this, of course, so if you develop a staph infection, you'll be able to cover the medical costs. If you get bored, grab a buggy and go watch the sunrise. It's spectacular around these parts. Tone woman make me walk that line you load 16 tons what do you get another day older and deeper in debt saying peter don't you call me cause i can't go i owe my soul to the company store every now and then you'll be made to head off on your lonesome and put a cot end on a drain a cot end is a net that catches the prawns as the pond empties I never learned why they're called cot ends or why this particular method is used instead of using the cages that we'll talk about later, but it's a great way to further soak your feet in dirty seawater and prawn poo. Six AM is when everybody else starts. Watch on jealously as they park up in their warm, dry cars, but don't think about it too much. 6am is also time to check the nets to make sure they're catching. Time to jump back into the ponds. Yep, there are prawns in there. You head back to the shed after that to sit around for another hour and a half. You might get bored, but don't bother bringing a book. Your wet hands will glue the pages together and make it unreadable. Just sit there like the chimp you are while your feet fester in your wet ass boots. Now it's time to pull out the nets. To begin this, you'll need to shake all the prawns to the bottom of the net so that the backloader can come along and pull them out of the water. You're not gonna need a gym because you'll be lifting 40 kilos of prawns above your head and shaking them violently. They won't like this, but if that bothers you, go get another job. Wait in the water, hook up the backloader, and watch as these poor little bastards reach their final destination. Get used to it as well, because you'll be doing this 3,000 times a day until it gets late enough in the season to start draining the ponds. By this point, you'll have been constantly wet for six to eight hours, and your feet and hands will look like prunes dipped in spooge. Oh, I owe my soul to the company store. There really isn't much you can do to keep yourself entertained when you're on the partials. It's extremely repetitive, superbly boring work, and it takes all of about two seconds to get sick of it. 
The scale of this farm is massive and there's plenty of pastures to do for the three months of the year that they harvest the prawns. With each net you pull, look out over the vast farm and contemplate how much more of this you can take before you kill yourself. Good luck if you're doing partials. You bloody need it. Wow, doesn't that look fucked? And I'll tell you why it looks fucked. It's because it is fucked. But if you bust your balls on partials hard enough, you end up moving up the ladder just a little bit. And that makes it a bit easier for these big sores on your feet to heal up. Now what's next for you, if you bust your balls on partials, is driving the trucks on the drain harvest. And that, it's not actually a bad job. Let's have, let's have a look, shall we? Let's take, take a little look. Let's have a little squeeze, shall we? Let's go. You'll start at 3am every day, but now you'll be sitting in the truck for an hour until someone loads bins onto it. You might be bored, but you'll no longer be wet, and with the partials fresh in your memory, you'll be grateful that finally those open sores in your legs will be able to heal. Split open, crawl through a crack where the rock was broken, burrowed a hole away in the coal go down. In a cradle of coal in the darkness I was laid, go down. Down in the dirt and darkness I was raised, go down. Cut me this method involves putting a cage over the drain and allowing the prawns to flow into one of two nets as the pond empties. You'll be standing there watching the prawns fill up the net, which can take anywhere from five minutes to one hour. It mostly depends on how active the prawns are and how much water is left in that particular pond. And the very next day I learned the way to haul go down. On the third day worked at board and pillar, worked on the fourth as a long wall filler, getting my steam up, you in the seam go down. And the son of the son of the son of a collier's son go down. Cold dust flows in the veins where the blood should run go down. Five steel ribs and an iron backbone, teeth that can bite through rock and black stone, working me time away in the mine go down. When the net is full, the digger reaches down and pulls it out of the cage to load it into one of three bins on the truck. Don't put your hands in the bin because there's a chemical in there that will burn your skin. Definitely don't drink the bin water. Once you've done this, it's wash, rinse, repeat. Just chill out, try to relax, and wait for the sunrise. Get in the coal, away in the hole, go down. I've scrabbled and picked at the face where the roof was low, go down. Crawled in the seams where only a mole could go, go down. Once the bins are full, drive your truck over to processing to have them unloaded. This is another lengthy process that takes about 20 minutes to complete, so be prepared to do a bit more nothing. I've worked in the hut and the plessy, the Brockwell seam go down. The bench and the busty, the Beaumont, the Marshall Green go down. I've lain on me back in the old three quarter up to the chin in stinking water. You in the coal, away in the hole go down. On your drive back to the pond, you'll have time to reflect on work and life. It was on one of these drives that I realised that the most interesting thing about working on a prawn farm is that there's absolutely nothing interesting about working on a prawn farm. All day it's back and forth, bin after bin, pond after pond. Remuneration is decent until you realise that at $30 per kilogram of prawns, each tonne you haul to processing on your truck is worth $30,000. Your measly pittance is but a drop in the ocean of money that these little fucks swim around in. Regardless of what percentage of profit you're being paid, however, this has to be one of the easiest jobs in the world. Life actually isn't too bad on the drain harvest. It's just stupendously boring. shade of the high pit heap, I'm still down there where the seams are deep and digging a hole away in the coal go down. At some point, you will realise that no matter what job you're doing here, you're still committing prawn genocide. Once the pond is drained, the prawns make one last futile effort for freedom. 
A wall of seagulls and ibises advance slowly as the prawns make their final sad march of death. If they manage to make it out of the puddles and into deeper water, they'll be rewarded by being sucked into the drain, where they'll either die of asphyxiation in the cage or hypothermia in the bins. Try not to think about all the tiny lives you've just taken. A job is a job and at the end of the day, people have to eat. There isn't a single farm on the planet that treats their animals well, so suck it up. The prawns won't haunt your nightmares forever. You're not allowed to save the prawns, but you can at least try to save the lives of these innocent fish. Fish fry find their way into the ponds from the seawater that's drawn in at the beginning of the season, and with a basically unlimited supply of food, end up becoming quite large. When the ponds are drained, it becomes easy to see exactly what you're exposing yourself to when you get inside them. Paddle wheels serve not only to aerate the water, but they also move the prawn poo into the centre, and there is a lot of prawn poo. Huge piles of shit reveal themselves as the dubious soft substance you've been subjecting your feet to for months. Feet which have been cut up by the millions of barnacles that have made their homes on any hard surface they can find. The best part of the job, whether you're on partials or drains, is going home. After a long day of committing senseless atrocities against helpless crustaceans, the long drive home is little comfort. Let what you've done sink in, and then sink a beer as soon as your feet touch the floor of your house. Well, that's all she wrote, folks. And I'll tell you what, it may not be a glamorous job, but somebody's got to do it. You know what I mean? As long as there are thousands of people eating prawns at Christmas and Easter, somebody's got to be there to farm them. Otherwise, where are they going to get their prawns? I'm out of here. I've got uh, bigger and better things on my horizon, but I'm going to leave you guys with a little bit of wisdom that was given to me by an old fella that works on the diggers at the prawn farm. He said to me, you got to be off your fucking head to work in a place like this. Ain't that the truth? Well, until next time, I'll see you guys later.